Medic Mind. Motivate, mentor, maximize. Let's introduce ourselves to the BMAT exam. The BMAT exam is the biomedical aptitude test. It is required by a minority of UK medical schools. This includes Oxford, Cambridge, UCL, Imperial, Brighton and Sussex, Leeds and Lancaster. The main BMAT exam is on the 2nd of November 2017. However, as of 2017, they have introduced a September exam as well. Knowledge of GCSE Biology, Chemistry, Maths and Physics is required. So should I take the BMAT? There are a number of factors you need to consider whether to take the BMAT or not. First of all, your UK CAT score. If you have a really strong UK CAT score, it means you should try and apply to UK CAT universities. This is because you should always apply using your strengths. A good UK CAT score will mean you should apply to UK CAT unis. A poor UK CAT school will mean that you should look at non-UK CAT universities and perhaps BMAT universities too. Now you may be thinking, what is a poor UK CAT score? It really does depend on the cohort. Anything below 600 or 630 to 650 is usually regarded as a low score. Anything below the 8th decile is also fitting into this category. The top 7 deciles, the top 6 to 7 deciles are usually good enough. Now, if you've got an average UK CAT score, I'd recommend applying to a good number of UK CAT universities which are not UK CAT heavy. This means that they do consider the UK CAT, but it isn't the most important factor. For example, Cardiff is one of those universities that does this. I personally applied for two UK CAT unis and two BMAT unis because I felt my UK CAT was strong enough to apply for two unis, but the universities I wanted to apply for, UCL and Imperial, required the BMAT. Now, so again, if you want to apply to UCL and Imperial, that's one of those options. And if you want to apply to Oxbridge, if you need, if you want to apply to Oxbridge, you have to sit the BMAT. Are you prepared to sit the September test or the November test? This is another factor you should consider, and we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of both. What about your exam grades? Are your exam grades good enough for a BMAT university? And your personal motives. Do you have enough energy and motivation to sit the BMAT as well? The UK CAT it can be very time consuming and can be very tiring. After the UK CAT, you may be fed up with admissions tests. It's wrong to have this attitude, but many candidates do. Now remember, it doesn't matter what university you go to when you're applying for medicine. As long as you get in, that's the main thing. So whether it's UK CAT Uni or a BMAT Uni, it honestly doesn't matter. It's up to you and your preference. Now let's look at when you should take your BMAT. Again, lots and lots of different factors you should consider. First off, let's look at the advantages of applying and doing the September test. You will know your score earlier. This is a benefit because if the BMAT goes badly, you can just apply to one or none at all. It also doesn't affect your schoolwork. With the way A-levels have changed, you have a hard A2 year, so you need to be prepared to focus from the get-go. The advantages of applying in November. You will have more time to revise. The BMAT requires lots of preparation, especially as many students need to revisit physics, so the time is very valuable. You will also have more time for the UK CAT if you sit it in November. Many students will have a packed summer with travelling, UCAS, work experience and so on, so many tend to sit the UK CAT in August. You do not want to split your revision too much, as both exams are very, very taxing. You will also have more time for your personal statement. You need to dedicate enough time to your personal statement, as well as these admissions tests. Doing UK CAT alongside your personal statement in summer is fine, but adding in BMAT makes things very difficult. You could also argue that you'll have the time after the SEPTA BMAT to write your personal statement as well. Another advantage of doing it in November, you're likely to do the BMAT anyway. If you do terrible at the UK CAT, then you will not want to apply to four UK CAT universities. If you do brilliantly at UK CAT, you will feel more confident to apply to BMAT universities. So either way, you might consider BMAT quite strongly. It is a risk, 
but with more preparation, you are less likely to do badly in the BMAT. At the end of the day, there is no right answer, and it really is based on a number of factors, including your timetable for summer and term one, how strongly you want to go to a BMAT university, your confidence in your BMAT abilities, your UK CAT score, and if you're applying to Oxford. Now, you must remember that Oxford does not accept the September test. You should also think about whether you need to re-revise physics. If you do, sitting the November exam might be a better idea because it will take a lot longer. In summary, these are the points I have raised on the previous slide. Have a read. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at each section of the BMAT just to see what they require and how long they are. The first section will test your aptitude. It will involve 35 multiple choice questions in 60 minutes. This equates to about 103 seconds per question. There are various question types including mathematical questions, verbal reasoning questions and spatial reasoning questions. A lot of the spatial reasoning questions are overlap with sections of the decision making in the UK CAT. Skills required include general problem solving, evaluating arguments, those again taken from decision making, and analysing data. Section 2 is the science section. Here you'll be given 27 multiple choice questions and you have 30 minutes to do them. You'll have around 65 seconds per question. GCSE level knowledge is required. The number of questions you get in maths, physics, chemistry and biology is quite evenly split. There are a variety of data forms that you'll get, diagrams, tables and charts. Don't worry if you haven't done A-level maths, it won't be an issue, or A-level physics. I hadn't done A-level physics and I did have to revise my GCSE physics again, but it wasn't too much of an issue because I just looked at the key principles using the textbooks I use for revision. And the last section is the essay section. You'll be given one A4 sheet to write an essay in 30 minutes. Now, if you have big handwriting, this may be a problem for you, so I'd recommend practicing on one page of A4 and trying to write as many words as you can. You can't go on to another page. You'll be given a choice of four essay topics. One of these will be focused on veterinary science, as those sitting Veterinary science exams will also have to set the BMAT, and there'll be lots of different essays. I'd recommend finding out what's in the news. So for example, this year something about the junior doctor's contract might be likely to come up since it's been in the news a lot. There are lots of different structures you could use. You could go for a basic essay uh, sample, the introduction, for, then the against, and then the conclusion. Or you could do a balance throughout. Always try and use real life example. This is why further reading is really important. Whenever you can link something back to your external knowledge, it will show the examiner that you know a lot about medicine and about that topic area. So our tips. Again, a one-to-one -one course is more important than ever because Section 3 is such an individual personal element that generic advice is just not very beneficial. Don't just sit down and learn the entire science GCSE syllabus. Only learn the certain aspects that are required. For example, for physics, learn the key formulae. Try and go over the specification that you learnt and learn the main core principles of each. Don't stress too much about physics because in the, at the end of the day, they're only testing your GCSE skills and these are topics you will have already covered. It's more just going over your previous knowledge. For section three, practice making essay plans and write around 20 essays in full. Try and get as many of these marked as you can by your teacher or anyone you may know. If you haven't watched the news throughout your past year, then tactically research case studies, think about what is likely to come up. If you are stressing, focus on the BMAT and catch up on schoolwork in Christmas. Your exams will be at the end of the year, but the BMAT is in November or September. So prioritising the BMAT around that time can be a risk that you might have to take and aim not to apply to more than two BMAT universities unless you're sitting the exam in September because it can be a massive risk. That is, of course, unless you feel confident you will do that well in the BMAT. The Medic Mind online course is being used by thousands of UK CAT students 
across the UK. For £30, you can access all 150 tutorials in our online course. The course covers four full days of UK cat teaching, as well as a course to help you with your personal statement and interview. You're free to ask as many questions as you'd like to our teachers, and with each tutorial, you can read along using our five UK Cat ebooks, covering 500 pages of theory and questions to guide you every step of the way.